if we go on to examine the, um, the background of the time that the prophet lived in, we have to realize that this is a time that is very poorly um, studied in general in Western contexts. It is true that there are a, a very tiny group of historians who specialize in the studies around the, say, this era of the 7th century, 6th, 7th centuries. There are, of course, some historians, and they are just as expert in their field as people who study other centuries are in theirs. But the spread of this information from those few historians through the popular culture is slight. And the placing of the 6th and 7th centuries in the Western historical canon is uh, a placement of, it is placed in limbo, more or less. It is an era that is completely unknown, about as completely unknown as anything can be. I often ask my students to name a single person who was alive during either of those centuries, other than the Prophet Muhammad. I ask people in the European tradition, especially, to name a single European person who was alive during those years, say from 500 to 700 in that entire long period. And you will notice that that is rather difficult because there aren't a lot of very famous people then. As teachers, you might recall Pope Gregory the Great, Gregory the First, who was Pope from 590 to 604. You will no doubt remember the Emperor Justinian, who died in 565, before the prophet was born, however. And so there were a couple of figures, but it's very slight, because that is really an era that's cut adrift from history as we know it. And yet, every part of history, if one wants to have a real view of it, is equally deserving of attention, because people were living in all those times. And of course, because most people don't have the time and the leisure to study all of history, let alone the interest, you will find that people, um, well, because history is often considered to be, you know, the really boring subject, but anyway, the, and that, that's a reasonable thing. And some of your history teachers, you know, there's nothing worse than having someone come and relate their family history to you. That is deadly boring. But if it's your family history, you may be interested. So you have to somehow relate the history of anything to the person. So of course, if we're going to say, all right, let's be politically correct now. So we'll scrub American colonial history and instead we'll have a unit on medieval Japan. Well, that's just not going to interest most of the students, let alone the teacher. So let's say the teacher is really gung-ho to interest the students in that. Well, that's going to still be a tall order. Because first of all, every single name is going to be unfamiliar. Can your students name anyone who lived in medieval Japan? So that's a, a question that one can, can uh, ask. So I think it's important, however, to see what this is in the context of world history scheme, both the way it is placed and the way I would place it in, uh, so that you can have it as a kind of background.